Hey guys, welcome to Stay Stitching. My name is Carla. It's Friday, so that means Free Pattern Friday. Okay, so from last week, I only drew through na three names this time because um, I've been, mostly everyone has been um, contacting me, so I don't feel like I need, you know, a bunch of names to go through. So the first person is the first person I drew, and if they don't want any or if I don't hear from them, then I will send to the next person. So I drew three names, and if all three of you would, um, here on YouTube, if you go to the About section, you can email me, or you can use my, um, you can DM me on Instagram, and we are at Mayfield Fabric on Instagram. And so our winners for today, we had 21 unique comments and number one was So Lolita. So Lolita is a beginning YouTuber and she has been making some sewing videos. Lately, she has been concentrating on her new Cricut. She has some kind of a Cricut machine and I'm not interested in it, so I haven't watched any of those videos. But um, I do watch her when she talks about um, sewing. So if you're into Cricut stuff, you know, she's doing a lot of videos about that. Number two was Polly Dolly. Um, I don't think Polly Dolly has a YouTube channel. Um, she's just a very lovely person who comments um, on my videos and I enjoy her. So that's Polly Dolly. And then the third one is Saturday Sewing with Debbie. Now, Saturday Sewing with Debbie is someone, you know how there's, if you have a YouTube channel or if you comment a lot on YouTube channels in the sewing community, you might start to feel like you're making friends with people. And there are probably a dozen gals on YouTube that I feel like I'm starting to make friends with. You know, I get to see them for their videos and they come and comment on my videos and I come and comment on their videos. And Saturday Sewing with Debbie is one of those people. Um, I believe she's um, somewhere in Tennessee and she's just del delightful. She focuses a lot on vintage sewing. She uses vintage patterns and she sews a very vintage style, not all the time, but a lot of the time. And she's a repeat customer at Mayfield Fabric. That's not why I like her. I liked her before that. So she has some things coming up um, that I will, I will link to you when she, when she hopefully she's gonna do a video about it, um, about some things that she has sewn with fabric from the shop. So um, I'm really excited to get that. And her, um, she's been showing some sneak peeks on Instagram. So that was last week. Let's look at this week's patterns. We start in the 70s um, with a men's pattern. This is um, a quick butterick men's pattern in a size medium. It's 6324. That's kind of awesome. Men's top, loose fitting top, has extended shoulders. Uh, full length straight sleeves and purchased rib knit band at lower edge. So there's that one. There's no line drawings on the back. Oh, the line drawings are right there. <laughs> That's why there's no line drawings on the back. These are pretty awesome. I think you could make these work. I might add ribbing to the sleeves. I think it's kind of weird that they put ribbing on the waist but not the sleeves. I would either add ribbing to the sleeves or take the ribbing off of the waist. I think that mix is weird. That's just me. You might like it, which would be totally okay. Um, this pattern is from um, 1975. This one was from 78, I think. Oh, I never found, I never found the date on that one. This is 1975 and I think this is adorable and I think it's totally wearable. We're still in the throes of passion with 1970s style. This is a size 14 bust 36 Mrs. Pattern. Um, Simplicity 7271 and it's a whole like wardrobe. -er. I love it. I love that kimono jacket. There's 16 pieces for the whole shooting match. And so you've got pants, a skirt, 
and a jacket. There are um, two views of the pants, two views of the jacket, or three views of the jacket, and then the, the skirt. Anyway, yes, that's adorable. Oh, I forgot to say what I'm wearing. I've already talked about this top, this dress. Um, this is art gallery fabric, and um, this was a learn to sew pattern maybe, and um, I already did a video on it where I talked about it. I really love it. Um, this kimono is just, I got it on sale at Penny's. They were having some crazy sale, and I got it for, you know, a few dollars. You know how they are. They put some outrageous price on it, and then they mark it down to next to nothing. All right, this next one is from 1976. Now I bought this one. This one wasn't, this one didn't come in a big batch. I bought this as an individual pattern because I was interested in learning to sew panties and I do wear slips under my dresses <coughs> almost always in the winter so that they don't ride up my tights. And sometimes in the summer, if it's, the thing that I think that a slip does is it keeps the fabric from catching on your butt, okay? Because the slip fabric is slippery. And so your dress, if you stand up or move around, it slides over your curvy bits instead of sticking to them. And that's always more flattering. See, it's more flattering for this dress to be like this than to be like this, right? And slips... Um, I'm wearing a half slip, not a full slip, but that was just an example. Slips help. Um, your clothes hang nicer. They just do. And so um, my mom in elementary school would check underneath my dress every day before school to see if I had a slip on. And if I didn't, she would make me go back to my bedroom, take my dress off and put my slip on because they were full slips back then. And I hated them. And she, my mother was a true Southern belle and slips were an important thing to her. I mean, by golly, you were gonna wear a slip. And I did, and now I do again. So as per usual, moms are frequently correct. So there's that one. That is McCall's three, 5358. McCall's 5358. This next one is from... 1977 and this is an accessories pattern it has all kinds of things one of the things that cracked me up view e is a um a lighter what do they even call this first of all this is mccall's 5812 they call it oh it's a lighter case i also bought this one i'm assuming i bought this one for the wardrobe uh for the dress garment bag and so view E, this little thing right here, that's a lighter case so that you can, I'm guessing, attach it to your purse strap so that you can always get a hold of your light when you need to have a cigarette. Because in 1977, a lot of people still smoked cigarettes. So nice, all kinds of fun stuff in that one. And then our last one is from 1988. And I bought this one as well. Um, and I think this one would work beautifully right now. I probably would not put that um, collar on there. That collar is a bit much for me. I feel like it's a bit young. And since I lived through the 80s, I mean, I graduated from high school in 1982. I've already done this. Okay. Um, so I don't want to do giant sailor collars again. So I would take that off and I would just have that V-neck, which I love. I think that's a perfect V-neck. And this one's a fabric hog too. This one, this pattern goes from 16 to 24 and size 24, um, five and an eighth yard of 45 inches and four and a quarter of 60 inches. So that's, that's pretty fabric, pretty much of a fabric hog. But if you have a beautiful flowy drapey fabric that you really, really love, that would be perfect. It's even got those flutter sleeves that are so popular right now, like the Eve dress. I think, um, Lisa really, uh, hit the nail on the head with that one. Okay. So 
those are the patterns. If you want one, leave a comment below and I will draw next Friday and announce the winners in my video. Let me quickly show you some fabric that will be going up in the store. It is not there yet. I did want to tell you that we add about 10 fabrics per week. Um, we are in the process of ordering our fall collection. I know we're a little bit late, but we're beginners. And I've just been just struggling so hard with trying to decide who to buy from, what to buy, and how much to buy. I think I have finally made some decisions and hopefully fabric will start arriving in the next week or two. In the meantime, I do have some vintage fabrics to keep you amused. This one I just want to show you because this is a fail. I don't always check all of my vintage fabrics when I buy them carefully and I should because this one is full of moth holes. I bought it because it is so beautiful. This woven, I love the colors, it's wool, it's just gorgeous, but it is riddled. Let me see if I can find that really bad section. Well, I was trying to, I was taking pictures outside earlier today and outside you can really see everything. I'm not really seeing, I'm seeing a few. Oh, here it is. I don't know if you can see that. It's riddled with moth holes. So I'm not putting this in the shop. What I think I might try to do to salvage it because I think it's so beautiful, I might try to make myself a scarf because scarves are all wrapped around and the holes might not show. Um, if I don't do that, I'm considering putting it in the washer and then maybe using it for, I don't know, a collar or maybe um, the torso of a coat, um, the lining for warmth, or maybe Troy could do something with the parts that aren't moth-eaten. I've never seen moth-eaten fabric before, which is weird because in Colorado we do have moths, but um, if you have any ideas for that, what I could do with bits and pieces of that gorgeous wool, let me know. This next one there's a lot of this. I would call this a rayon file or um, an acetate. Um, I'm not sure which one it is, but it is um, not too shiny. It does have a sheen. It's got a beautiful drape. And what I would do with this, I, um, I think a tea dress would be gorgeous in this. This dress that I'm wearing, which is not a tea dress and is, has no vintage vibe whatsoever would be ideal in this because you could wear any cardigan that you wanted over it. You could pair it with, um, this is a short sleeve dress, so it's year round. You could pair it with red shoes, yellow shoes, gray shoes, navy shoes, um, brown with a brown belt if you wanted a brown bag. Um, and then the other thing I would consider doing with this that I was thinking while I was taking pictures of it is how gorgeous would this be as the lining to a camel colored coat. Navy and camel. Yeah, that's a gorgeous one. This one, this is 100% cotton. This is a bark cloth or a duck. When I bought this, it was dirty. And so I washed it. I knew it was 100% cotton. And I washed it and dried it in my dryer and I thought that it would come clean because cotton is so forgiving about that, and it did. It came completely clean and it is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, my one warning for you, if you fall in love with the way this fabric looks like I have, um, and this is the only reason why I'm not keeping this, it's a little bit too heavy for me to figure out what to do with it. Um, I wouldn't wear it out of pants. You could make a beautiful jacket with it to go over a navy dress. They would be perfect together. And um, so that would be something you could do with it or upholstery. Um, if you have a chair, a small chair that needs reupholstered, um, this could be gorgeous for that. And the colors are 
beautiful. The background is kind of an oatmeal color. It's not white. It's not ivory. It's more of an oatmeal. Um, these aquas and teals are vibrant and so are the blues. It's got olive and avocado green in it. And then it goes all the way down into black. It's just stunning. And the second I saw it wadded up, there's this ratty, ratty thrift store in Pueblo. And, um, I think their prices are outrageous. And so I don't buy things from them very often. And this, they obviously didn't think was worth anything. And so it wasn't too expensive. Um, it, it, you know, I felt like I could take a chance on it and, um, I did. And I'm so glad I did because it's beautiful. I have two pieces of this. I think this is a wool blend. This might be like a wool rayon. It's incredibly drapey and comfortable. Um, it has a like a basket weave, square kind of weave to it. I would, I would wear this in a shirt dress. I would wear this as a skirt. I would wear this as an unstructured jacket. Um, it's a little bit too heavy for me to wear as a shirt. Um, but I don't know, maybe not, maybe a men's shirt or an oversized shirt, but it's gorgeous and it's in a beautiful khaki color and I have two pieces of it. So there's that. I only have two more to show you. This one is a beautiful brown wool. It's a gorgeous chocolate brown wool with a, just a normal wool weave. It's not like a herringbone or anything like that, or it's just just straight woven um, brown chocolate wool. Now, this one I thought I might not put in the store because it has a flaw in it right on the fold. But as I thought about it, I'm just going to list it that way. And I took a lot of pictures. Where is that flaw? Oh, there it is. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a big it's a big flaw. Where'd it go? It's a big flaw. You could not use this on a garment. Can you see that? And so I'm just going to price this accordingly. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. You can still make a variety of things out of it. You just can't make anything that's on the fold, at least not right there at that part. And that's like five or six inches long right along the fold. Then the last fabric I have to show you is always my favorite, the Vintage Rayon Chalets. This one, I would guess, would be from the 90s. It's got that somber, grown-up, I'm important colorway about it. Perfect for fall and winter. It's a border print. So this is the one selvage. And then this is the other selvage. This is real Tex, real Tex fabric who I did not research. This is a lightweight chalet, very lightweight, light enough for a pussy blow, bow blouse or something like that. The colors are a gorgeous dark teal, a mustardy brown, rusty red, black, mustard, um, navy, ivory, perfect. Perfect for a dress, perfect for a blouse, perfect for a big flowy skirt. Okay. Oh, now I don't have time to do all those. All right. I'm not going to show you the rest of them, but remember, um, that we're always adding new fabrics to the store. So if you're ever looking for something, um, our vintage fabrics generally run five or six dollars a yard. Wools are sometimes more and valuable pieces like bark cloths or historic fabrics or pet fabrics from important uh, manufacturers. Those will be a little bit more. I hope you're having a great day. I can't wait to go so I can put on something warm because we're having a cold gray day, windy, blustery and cold and this isn't really doing it for me. So I'm going to go put on a gross old sweatshirt and um, some fluffy slippers and then I'll edit this video. You guys take care.
going.